and uh, the book of First Kings, chapter number 18, uh, join me there. Uh, all, everybody, everybody join me in the book of eight, book of uh, First Kings uh, 18, verses uh, number 20, uh, verse number 20. Uh, if you don't have it, it'll be right here on the screen. Uh, it'll be right here on the screen. Watch this. It says this. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. I need you to see something. Verse number 21, Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? <laughs> if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. I want to put a tag on this text and teach for a few moments from this topic. I can show you better than I can tell you. I can show you better than I can tell you. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Unless you've been living under a rock, maybe disconnected from all of your socials or Maybe you've been secluded in prayer. Uh, you have heard about this feud between Canadian born hit maker, rapper Drake, and West Coast wordsmith Kendrick Lamar. Th there is a feud between rapper Drake and Kendrick Lamar. While I'll spare you the details of this discourse, however, I will tell you that apparently there is a war within the war. Typically, when two rappers engage in a rap battle, the goal of the battle is to, uh, to be the more witty or wise or clever or even creative with their jaw jabs. These rap battles, y'all with me? These rap battles are won by the person who can land the heaviest bar in the wittiest way. Regrettably, these bars or these wars, this war of words, don't always end peacefully. Unfortunately, history shows us uh, that many lives have been lost as a result of what started out as slander on a song ended up as someone slain in the streets. The most familiar may be being Tupac and Biggie. Dr Drake and Kendrick to use a boxing example, stand in their respective corners with their entourages as their corner men. These two folds both are out to prove who is the best lyricist with the most authenticity. Stay with me for a moment. While I don't condone uh, the content created within the pages or within the, the lyrics of any of these songs. I don't agree, I don't endorse, or I don't even encourage uh, anyone to act out some of the things that have been accused or even alleged within these songs. I would hope that these brothers will understand something that I think is powerful. I think that there's something to be said that when we embrace brotherhood as a reality, because often too many people smile when brothers get slain. And that in these yet to be United States, we often are drawn to drama. Oh my. But, 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 but my hope is that we would understand, stay with me, that this war of words that, we are, that they are engaged in pales in comparison to the spiritual, social, racial, economical, political, and uh, uh, even relational war that black and brown people are in. Watch this, this is extremely important. And while killing someone uh, is not limited to physically doing so, because it can happen with our tongues. So, so, so when I yield my tongue as a sword, I can cut down somebody. 
The, the Bible says this. The Bible says this in Proverbs 13 and 3. It says this is right here on your screen. It says those who control their tongue will have a long life. Opening your mouth, watch this, can ruin everything. <laughs> watch this. Those who control their tongue will have a long life. That, that my life will look like my language, that my world is formed by my words, that my speech can determine what I see, what would happen if those brothers would change their speech about each other. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me because this ain't about them. Come on, y'all ain't drive all the way to hear about them. This is about us. Um, um, uh, um, I, I understand that as the scripture says, the life and death is in the power of the tongue. In other words, my life will look like what my words look like. Mm. So, so if I want to change my life, I got to change my language. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to delete certain language out of my vocabulary. I'm getting ready to delete if and start inserting when. Mm. I'm starting to delete maybe and I'm going to insert definitely. I'm deleting someday and I'm inserting today. Look at somebody and say I'm changing my language. Yeah. I'm crazy enough to believe that if I start speaking the things that God said about me, I'll start seeing the things that God said I can see. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I said I'm crazy enough to believe that if I start speaking God's word the way that God speaks his word over me, I'll begin to see the things that God said I can see. I'm changing my language in our text. We find some individuals who are engaged in a beef. They are in a feud. They are in a war of words at this point. They, they are in a battle. We find uh, these individuals, we find Elijah and Ahab. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's, let me give you a little context so that you can respect the content. It's been about 100 years since the kingdom of Israel has been united. The kingdom is split both north and south now. Ahab, Ahab is the king, and this, this king Ahab is wicked. This king Ahab has forsaken the true God, Yahweh. He has forsaken the true God, Yahweh. And, 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 all, and, and, and one of his first orders of business is to drive out all of the true prophets. So, so, so here it is. Here it is. King Ahab uh, uh, is, is the evil king in office. And uh, he drives out all of the true prophets. So, so there were, at this time, 101 true prophets. Okay, that's important. There were upwards of 450 prophets of Baal. Mm. There, there's 101 true prophets and about 450 prophets of Baal. Now, he has driven out 100 of the 101. He, he's, dri he's driven out 100 of the 101. There, 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 there's, there, there's one, there's one, there's one. So here it is, here it is. Elijah is the dominant voice that remains unfazed by Ahab's threats. Ahab, Ahab is an evil king. Ahab, Ahab is an evil individual. Uh, uh, Elijah then earlier in the text Elijah comes to Ahab and says Ahab I got something to tell you it ain't raining until I say so I'm just give you a little context e Elijah comes to the king this evil king this king that will have you killed on the spot this king Elijah says I got something to tell you Ahab Ahab says what's up he says it's not gonna rain until I tell it to just hold on for me. I'll come get you. Uh, uh, he says, king, wicked king, you can kill me if you want, but let me tell you something. It won't rain until I tell you. And because Elijah said that there was a famine in the land, y'all know this, God told Elijah, go to the brook. And that's where the, the, the brook traffic, the ravens came, and they fed Elijah there. So you, you, you're familiar with that. Here's, here's what I want to highlight. Here's what I want to illuminate. It was Elijah that used his mouth to speak to the king. Elijah understood that he understood the power of his tongue because your mouth can either move mountains or create them. He says, he says, 
He says, what, what, what you want to do with your power? Mm. Uh, he, Elijah goes to Ahab. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. It's going to mess you up. Elijah goes to Ahab, uh, and, and he tells him, he says, he says it's not going to rain uh, until I say it's going to rain. Fast forward. That was all context. Fast forward. The Bible says, Lord, this is going to mess you up. The Bible says Ahab comes and finds Elijah. Ahab gets word from Obadiah. Obadiah tells Ahab, Ahab, Elijah is around. Ahab says, fool, for real? This is what he said. He said, where that guy at? I got a problem with him. So Ahab says, let me go find Elijah. We got beef. We got some unsettled issues. They're engaged in a battle. Is it making sense yet? Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. You need Bible. First Kings, second, uh, First Kings chapter 18, watch this, verse number 16 says, And Ahab went to meet Elijah. Verse number 17. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, there's a ring in this microphone up here. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troublemaker of Israel? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Don't read anymore. Just look right here. Ahab went to look for Elijah. Elijah was minding his own business. Then when Ahab saw him, Ahab said, hey, ain't that you, troublemaker? He said, ain't that you? That, that's how he addressed uh, Elijah. Elijah says this. Watch what Elijah said. We switch? Okay. Thank you. Watch, watch what Elijah says. Appreciate y'all. Watch what Elijah says. Elijah says this. Watch this because Elijah did not start this, but he's going to finish it. Verse number 18. I have not made any trouble for Israel, but you and your father's family did. <laughs> Wait, I just want you. Y'all stay with me. This is two people engaged in, a, in, a, in an argument. <laughs> They're in a, a battle, a war of words. Elijah says, oh, no, I didn't start the trouble, but you and your daddy did. <laughs> Lord, I wish, boy, listen to me. Watch what he says. You and your fathers have, you, and this is how you've done it. You have abandoned the Lord's commands, and you have followed Baals or Baals. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Hey, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I got to lay this foundation before we get where we're going. Ahab was so wicked. And, and Elijah said, I'm not the troublemaker. You and your daddy is. So that made me say, who's his daddy? Because I, I need to know. I need to get the tea. Because if you say his daddy is a mess, I need girl, let me find out. So I went searching to find out about Ahab's father. And I found out that Ahab's father is named Omri, O-M-R-I. His father's name Omri, and his father was known as the most wicked king up to his date. He, he, was, so, so he was so wicked, he, he would sacrifice people because he felt like it. He, this, and, and the thing that made him known as the most wicked king was this. Is this too much context for y'all? This is a thinking church. And, and what, made, what made him so wicked was this is that he turned uh, the nation from worshipers of God to worshipers of idols. Yeah. Stay with me. Yeah. So to, uh, to Omri's de death, he only reigned for a few years. To his death, he was the most wicked king, but he had a son, and his son's name was Ahab. And I'm asking the text, how in the world can somebody be more evil, more wicked than him? Hold on to your wig. And I found out the thing that made Ahab even more wicked than his father Omri was that Ahab married Jezebel. Uh, you, need, you, you, you need me to tell you who Jezebel is. So Jezebel was single-handedly responsible for driving out all of the prophets out of Israel. So, 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 stay with me, stay with me. Oh, this is good to me. 
So, so I said, what? That's what made Ahab that wicked? Because who he married? Be careful. You might start to mirror who you marry. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Be careful. You might start to mirror who you marry. That's why I don't got time. I don't have time. You, you, you. Are y is this microphone on? Is it working? Okay, I'm just making sure. You, you, you got to be careful who you connect with. Uh, it's more than one night. Only one night, though. Cause you your life, though. Even your soul, though. <laughs> I'm gonna preach better at 12 o'clock. I promise you. Y'all might want to stay. Watch this. So Ahab ran up on Elijah. Elijah didn't start it, but Elijah said, I'll finish it. You better be careful with messing with quiet people. We ain't going to start the trouble. But <laughs> Somebody say, Lord, work on me. Just work. Jesus Christ, work on me because I don't cause no problems. But when a problem come to me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Watch this. So now, watch this. This is what Elijah does. Elijah says, I'm going somewhere. Uh, somebody say, not like us. I'm going somewhere. Elijah says, Elijah says, now you and your daddy, um, y'all the troublemakers because y'all have turned people's hearts from God to Baal or Baal. Watch what he says. Elijah then goes further because you started it, I'm going to finish it. Elijah says, since you came to me, verse number 19, summon all the people of Israel to meet you on Mount Carmel. We're going to battle this thing out. Me and you. <laughs> and bring, four, bring the 450 prophets of Baal. Come on. Yeah. Uh -huh. And bring 400 prophets of Asherah uh -huh. who eat at Jezebel's table. Okay, so, so, God, he says, since you came causing problems with me, oh, don't worry about it. I promise you. We're going to handle this. Go get everybody you know and they mama them. Line them up and it's me. I need you to see this. He says, go get, what are we looking at? What's that? Y'all do the math. 450 plus 400, carry the two, it's negative, it's 850. There you go. Praise the Lord. I would never get 850. If somebody ever gave you an answer, you still didn't believe it. 850? Yes, you don't even know. <laughs> 850 at least against one, not including the people whose hearts they've turned towards Baal. Do y'all see this beef? You see this feud here? <laughs> e e watch this. Uh, Elijah is saying that he's going to make an announcement. He says, verse number 19, he's making an announcement of what he's believing that God will do. Because real faith will make an announcement while trusting God for fulfillment. Real faith will make an announcement while trusting God for fulfillment. See, this is what culture tells you. Culture tells you, grind in silence. Work behind the scenes. Move in silence. Don't tell anybody. Because the moment you tell somebody, then the enemy going to come and steal yo. And then the moment you, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because the culture operates in limited faith. But because we have no cap faith, we understand that the enemy can't do anything to what God has a predestined. So go ahead and make, make a public announcement. Make a public announcement of what God is getting ready to do in your life. If he's going to heal you, tell the world God is going to heal my body. If he's going to deliver you, tell the world that God is getting ready to deliver me. If he's going to provide for you, tell the world God is going to provide. Make an announcement. He says, real faith will make an announcement while trusting God for fulfillment. I need five people in here just to shout, I'm going public. Yeah. I'm going public. I'm getting ready to tell Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Black Planet, MySpace. I'm getting ready to tell all of them what God is going to do in my life. 
Elijah says, bring them all. Bring them out. Bring them out. He says, bring them out because I got public faith. I, I, I don't have secret faith. I, I, I don't have to hide what I believe because everybody around me does not. I, I don't have to hide what I believe because I have contrary people speaking against it. I can't let my language be limited by those who don't have faith I have because some people will cap you by their faith. I can imagine what the 100 prophets were thinking when they got word that this one prophet was trying to go against Y'all said 850. I can imagine them saying, is he crazy? Why would he do that? I, I, I mean, come on now. God is good, but y'all got, come on now. I know what the Bible says, but come on now. And that's what we have, some of us. We have people that say, are you crazy? Why would you? Girl, are you sure you want to? Man, you better be careful because... And people wouldn't try and talk you out of what God is trying to talk you into. The battle continues. Ooh, I'm doing good on time. Are y'all all right? First Kings 18, watch what he says. He said in 20, he said, now summon all the people and uh, get all the 450 prophets, bring them, um, um, uh, and then bring the other 400 prophets uh, of Asherah, uh, uh, bring, bring all of them. Then he says, so Ahab went, or oh, sorry, Ahab sent word. Can I read the Bible in church? Ahab sent word throughout Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, watch what he says. Watch what he says. This is, if you ever watch battles, this is, everybody has an opportunity to go. You go, then I go. Elijah says, here, here's what he says. It's right here on the screen. Peep this. He says, Elijah says on the screen, verse number 20, 21, on the screen, Elijah, I love y'all, <laughs> went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? He says, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. Now we're getting to the real fuel behind the feud. We see the first facet of fuel um, is, uh, we see it right here in the text, number one, is we see that Ahab chose wavering over worshiping. Elijah says, verse number 21, he says, how long um, will you waver between two opinions? And I, that, that, that was interesting to, me, interesting to me because I was trying to figure out what's the significance of that. Why is that important? Because uh, when you're reading the text and you're studying text, you got to get real nosy. Just ask all kind of crazy, crazy questions. He says, he, says, he says, how long will you waver? I looked that word waver, waver up in the original language. The word waver, uh, I'm sorry, waver is, is to hesitate or, watch this, to limp. I'm coming for somebody. He said, the word waver is to limp. How long will you limp? Wow. 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 Uh. <laughs> he says, he says, he says, how long will you hesitate? Will you be um, indecisive? Because indecision hinges on the arrogant assumption that you're in control of your own time. Indecision hinges on the arrogant assumption that you're in control of your time. So when I hesitate on choosing God, uh, are y'all here? When I hesitate on making a decision for God, what I'm doing is I'm endorsing my own limp. I'm telling my limp that it can last forever. Boy, this is good to me. Um, 
In essence, Elijah is saying, what are you waiting on? Why are you wavering? It's time to move. Some of us, some of us, some of us, we don't understand that the door is closing. The window is closing. And every day you wake up is the day you're closer to not being here. And we're wasting time wavering. As if we control whether we wake up. I didn't say ouch or amen or something like somebody. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Opportunities aren't eternal and they almost are never convenient. They, they, you, uh, <laughs> op uh, opportunities are not convenient. I talked to somebody earlier this week and it was like, I got an opportunity to do something. But the only thing is, I got a plan. I, got, I was headed to go this way. I was getting ready to move, go over here and travel here first. And then I'm going to ask them whether or not they can hold on, hold it for me till I get back because I made plans prior to them giving me the opportunity. I said, you can go on the trip, but when you get back, it won't be there. Because opportunities are not eternal. They don't last forever. There is a window. Lord have mercy. I feel God on this. There's a window for decision making. Ooh, ooh. Oh, Jesus. Elijah says, I don't know how much I'll get to. How long will you limp? He says, how long will you limp? We're not talking about a limp God gave you. A limp you gave yourself from a decision you made or one you refused to make. Elijah says, how long will you limp between two opinions? What God is saying and what you want to do. How long will you, will you wrestle? Lord have mercy. How long will you wrestle between what I'm calling you to and what I'm calling you from? How, how long? How long will you limp between two opinions? Because God has an opinion and we have one. Notice I didn't say Satan. Y'all better come back next week. I'll preach better. <laughs> he says, watch, this, watch what he says. He says, he says, how long will you limp between two opinions? Um, some of us are limping. We love God's way, but we love ours more. We love the word, and we love the world. We got major purpose, but massively petty. We got to get back anointing. You wrong me? Oh, I'm going to get you back. Might not be today. Might not even be tomorrow. But I promise you, it ain't over until I win. But the quality of our life will look like, or, or I say like this, the quality of our life will be determined by how long you love your limp. And Elijah asks Ahab the existential question that must be asked, not just to Ahab, but to us. How long will I limp between two opinions? Because, I got to skip a whole lot, but watch this. Because there are prophets of Yahweh and there are prophets of Baal. They both have the same name, prophet. They, they both are prophets. <laughs> they, 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 they both are, God, they bo I'll just go there. Let's go here. Uh, they both are prophets. Now, let me tell you something about Baal before I finish. I'm done for real. Baal was said and believed to speak through lightning. Lightning is often accompanied by thunder. Thunder typically is accompanied by rain. Right. 
<laughs> so, so, so Baal, the prophets of Baal, uh -huh. Elijah says, y'all get together, cut a bull up, put him on y'all altar. And I want y'all to call on your prophet, yeah. I mean your God, Baal, uh -huh. who is known to speak through lightning. Lightning can cause a fire. So Elijah says, y'all already have 850 on your side. Cool. Now I'm going to sweeten the pie even more for you. I'm going to, let, let's get a bull. Let's put him on an altar. Now ask your fire God to burn up this bull. And they got together. And the Bible says they danced around. They, they, watch this. They danced around. And the word, <laughs> it's going to mess you up. The word in the original language for what they did around the altar trying to get Baal to do something is limp. They took their broken self, unwilling to address their own limp. They thought they were just going to dance around it. So Elijah says, get them. Um, I got to go, y'all. Uh, Lord have mercy. And it's Elijah, and they do it all night long. They run around, they yell, they scream. And Elijah says this. He begins to taunt him. Y'all go back and read it. I don't got time. He tells Eli Elijah, thousands of people, Elijah say, shout louder. <laughs> Your God can't hear you. <laughs> Elijah said, no, y'all ain't loud enough. Come on, open up your mouth and give him glory. <laughs> and then he says, maybe your God is asleep. <laughs> he said, maybe the problem is your God is musing or thinking about what he should be doing. Maybe he goes even further to undercut him. He says, maybe your God is relieving himself. Maybe he's in the bathroom. See, see, this is, you, 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 hear, you hear that tone in his voice? That's assertiveness, not aggression. See, some people think once you become a believer, you become a coward. I got to go. I ain't got time. Y'all come back for 12. So, so he says, go ahead. Uh, and they did it all day and all night to the point where they got knives and they start cutting themselves and they start bleeding all over the place and nothing was happening. And then Elijah says, all right, y'all y'all done had like two days. Uh, yo, you, you're killing me at this point. This is in the Bible. Y'all better read the Bible. They got a whole beef in the Bible. It's there. Elijah says, all right, my turn. We good? Can I go now? All right. Elijah said, let me get a bull. He gets the bull, cuts the bull up, puts the bull on the altar of the Lord right there. And then Elijah says, check this out. Hey, go get me some uh, vessels of water. They go get the water. Elijah says, take the water, pour it all over the wood. Don't do it once. Don't do it twice. Do it three times. One for the father. Man, I... One for the son. He says, pour the water all over the wood. All over the bull. Then he turns around and he said, Lord, I know you hear me. And I need you to answer me. And I'm a prophet, and I'm against other prophets. But these prophets that's against me are not like us. We might got the same name, but we ain't the same. We may wear the same clothes, but we ain't the same. We might shout the same, but we are not the same. He says, and God, because I know you're the God that answers by fire, I need you to do me a favor so that your name can get glory. And I need about 15 people in here that understands that, 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 that there's a something to say about God understanding that we're not the same. We're not, we're not the same. We ain't the same. <laughs> Elijah says this and I'm done. I got to go. Lord have mercy, I got, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. And he says, um, he says this, 
Let me skip. I'm skipping all over, y'all. Y'all bear with me. I'm skipping all over. There we go. First Kings. 18, 36, and 37, at the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, that I am serving and you have done these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that they're not like us. They, they will know that you are Lord and you are God and that you are turning their hearts back. If you read through the story, every time the prophets prayed, or, or danced, the prophets above. They said nothing when Elijah asked them a question. They had no answers. They didn't know what to do. All, all throughout. And then the prophet, I mean the God of Baal, he, his light, there was no lightning. He had nothing to say either. They had nothing to say. Their mouths were zipped. Then they get to the point they get to the point, watch this, it's the hard truth, I got to give it to you because I love you. They get to the point to where um, God sends down fire on Elijah's behalf. They fall, the prophets fall to their knees. They fall to their knees worshiping, trying to, try, to, to worshiping the true God. Watch this. Praying that God would turn their hearts back to, back to him again. Stay with me. Elijah told the people to seize those prophets, took them to another mountain. God burned them up. They made a decision, but the decision was too late. The damage was already done. I got to give you the whole story. I can't just let you leave. You know, oh, okay, he did it. He did it. Yes, he did. But their indecision cost them. I'm done. Would you stand to your feet? Not like us is the idea that there's, there's something that God is calling us to. There's a way in which that God is calling us to live. And it won't look like what others look like or what others think it should look like. But it will look everything like what God says we should look like. I can show you better than I can tell you. I can show you what God is doing better than I can just talk about what he's doing. I want to be a, I want to be a picture of what God is doing. I want to be a billboard for transformation. I, I'm done. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes? I'm done, for real. Some of us have a decision to make. You got a decision to make. And it is no accident that God sent you here for this day and this moment. Some of us have been wavering between two opinions. It's like, man, I love God, and man, sometimes I just be tripping. I want to let you know something. God loves you so much, and his grace is so amazing that he has allowed you to get to this point, to hear that. And the beautiful thing is that he loves you, that he loves us so much that he, was not, he will not leave us the same. I love you so much, I can't even leave you with that limp if you want me to take it. So Father, I pray, and even as I'm praying, if that's you, would you meet me at the altar? You say, I want to I reconnect with Christ on a whole nother level. I want to rededicate. I want to reconnect with him. Come on, meet me at the altar. We're not going to waver between two opinions. The, the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. In the name of Jesus, come on, if that's you, come on, come on, come on.